This is our Earth, four and a half billion years old. It has been supporting life for the last three and a half billion years. Frogs appeared 250 million years ago, whilst modern humans have only been here for the last 200,000 years. Viruses, however, are as old as the earliest forms of life on Earth. Viruses reproduce by invading the body of a living organism and hijacking its cells. They then use the host cell's own machinery to make copies of themselves. In around 1990, people in England began to notice groups of frogs suffering from a disease, and the investigation confirmed that this disease was caused by viruses known as Rana viruses, These viruses were introduced to the UK from overseas and have had a major negative impact on frog populations. Ranavirus infections can lead to internal bleeding, skin ulcerations and even loss of limbs. In extreme cases, ranavirus disease can be fatal. When you think of a pond, what do you see? Lots of water, full of greenery, perhaps a lily pad or two, most likely you think of a small, rocky pool full of frogs. You'd be forgiven for thinking these picturesque water worlds are simply perfect for wildlife. Full of life, plenty of insects and lush green plants, ponds are indeed fantastic habitats. However, all is not as it seems. Ranavirus disease has been devastating British ponds, even leading to the collapse of entire populations. In ponds that were found to be infected with ranavirus, frog numbers fell 81% in just over a decade. But what causes ponds to become such a hive of infection? A number of factors promote the presence and spread of ranavirus, including some things that we may be unknowingly doing ourselves in our day-to-day lives. Twenty years of frog ranavirus outbreak reports found that 80% of new virus occurrences in these studies were due to frogs naturally moving between ponds. The remaining 20% of outbreaks were explained by human behaviour. For example, many pond owners introduced fish, frog spawn or aquatic plants which may be carrying ranavirus into the pond environment without realising they were spreading the infection. Pollution and climate change are other factors that promote the spread of ranavirus. Average temperatures have increased since 1990. Ranavirus thrives in higher temperatures, explaining the boom in the disease. With a world that is continually warming, outbreaks of ranavirus are likely to become more frequent and potentially overlap with the frog breeding season. If tadpoles were to become infected, populations of frogs may never recover. Amphibians are vital to the world's ecosystems. They are one of the most incredibly diverse forms of life, found almost everywhere in the world and are essential components of food webs. Frogs and newts keep the insect and slug populations in check and themselves serve as prey for foxes and birds. Amphibians are often a child's first introduction to the natural world. We have a connection with them as they live in such close proximity to our homes. This is why we take them for granted. Unfortunately, amphibians are facing a number of threats and challenges. They are the most threatened group of vertebrates on the planet, and ranavirus is capable of driving populations to extinction. But... There is hope, and you can help. Ponds remain one of the most positive steps we can all take to support wildlife. They help the animals in your garden thrive and are colonised naturally by life of all sorts without assistance from humans. You can report any suspected cases of ranavirus that you find in your garden to the Garden Wildlife Health Project at Garden Wildlife Health. Dot org. A film made by Alice Oliver and Samuel Pollard.
with support from University College London and the Zoological Society of London. Narrated by Stephen Fry.